on an all-new late show, Dave Throws Stuff Off the Roof. Plus, Jennifer Aniston and Dave's Christmas Trip to Baghdad. Tonight, now your local news. Next at 11, charges filed. The elderly man behind the wheel of the Santa Monica Farmer's Market crash is facing prison time. Say cheese, photographing passengers. The newest anti-terrorism measure to keep the skies safe. Forget the BCS, the Trojans know which is the best team in college football. Brittany's a bride, at least until her lawyers can get her out of it. The news starts right now. Now, Paul Majors, Laura Diaz, Byron Miranda with weather, and Jim Hill on sports. You're watching CBS 2 News at 11. It was a deadly scene when a man slammed into the Santa Monica Farmer's Market last July. Tonight, that driver faces multiple homicide charges. Good evening, I'm Paul Majors. And I'm Laura Diaz. Here is the latest at 11. He said it was an accident, but prosecutors say it was manslaughter. All this after a lengthy investigation. Prosecutors say George Russell Weller is responsible for the deaths of 10 people on that tragic day back in July. CBS 2 News reporter Jennifer Sabi is live in Santa Monica with the very latest there. Jennifer. Laura, George Weller has been ordered to turn himself in tomorrow morning where he will be charged with 10 counts of felony vehicular manslaughter. Now, if he is convicted on all counts, he could face up to 18 years in prison, which for a man of 87 years old amounts to a life sentence. The sign on his front door still reads, Welcome. Mr. Weller? But friends of George Russell Weller say the 87-year-old doesn't really welcome anyone here to his home anymore. In fact, they say he rarely leaves it. Ever since that July day when the elderly man sped for two and a half blocks down a crowded Santa Monica farmer's market, plowing down people as he went. Sorry about it. Let's go. Weller will have to come out tomorrow, however, for he's been ordered to surrender at an L.A. courthouse where he will be charged with 10 counts of felony vehicular manslaughter with gross negligence. One count for each person who died that surreal Santa Monica day. To the mother of the littlest victim, it matters not that Weller will be charged with manslaughter for killing her little girl. I'm just going to give my daughter back. Veronica Valladera's three-year-old daughter, Cindy, was one of ten people to lose their life. I feel um, sad and, and bad. Sad and bad, she told me, when police first recommended Weller be charged. But not, she said, vengeful, not relieved, not satisfied that he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Their lawyer places the bigger blame on the city of Santa Monica for not erecting stronger traffic barricades. The city has to recognize its responsibility, its failure to provide proper safety devices. Now that lawyer told me he plans on suing the city of Santa Monica for negligence and perhaps the state of California as well for reissuing a driver's license to Mr. Weller. Mr. Weller's attorneys plans on holding a news conference tomorrow morning right after his client turns himself in. Reporting live from Santa Monica, I'm Jennifer Sabi, CBS 2 News. All right, Jennifer, thank you very much. A dramatic situation unfolding this afternoon inside a Glendale office building. A woman barricaded herself inside the Unum Providence building on North Central Avenue. The suspect, Nasik Makarian, reportedly told police she wanted to kill her husband. Police negotiators convinced her to throw out her gun, which turned out to be plastic. She also had a knife and a hammer. Tonight, she's facing charges of making terroristic threats. We should know later this week if a San Fernando Valley girl died from the flu. 12-year-old Amanda Ortega of Silmar died on New Year's Day. Ortega first began suffering flu-like symptoms in mid-December. Then on Thursday, she developed a stomach ache and a high fever. Results from the blood tests are expected by Friday. The threat of terrorism is still very real tonight as America remains on orange alert. You're looking live at LAX where new security measures are in effect, and that means most foreign nationals entering the U.S. will be fingerprinted and photographed. All of this in response to America's heightened state of alert. CBS 2's Joel Conable is live at LAX with more. Joel? Paul, some of those security measures have actually been reduced. Last week we showed our viewers how there were two security checkpoints on the airport perimeter. Those checkpoints have been reduced to one. And last week also there was no curbside drop-off allowed. That's been changed now. You can drop your family and relatives right at the departure level. But the new security you're talking about involves your fingerprint and your photo. Almost looks like something out of an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Many of these international travelers arriving at LAX tonight are guinea pigs for a brand new security system. 
assuming I think this is a security control system. I think it's okay. Now I need your right index finger. He apparently likes the machine that looks like something out of a science fiction movie. It's called U.S. Visit. LAX has it, and with a scan of your finger and a snap of your photo, the government can now determine if you're actually a tourist or a terrorist. This system will serve as a net to catch those who pose a danger, allowing those that we welcome to enter without difficulty. But some people we spoke to told us that net may have a few holes in it. One problem, they say, is the fact that 28 countries are exempt. Passengers flying in from places like England, Australia, and Singapore don't even have to be checked. And so by exempting those countries, they're just showing the system really isn't a universal system. <laughs> Most passengers we spoke to seem to embrace the new system, including their relatives tonight at LAX. They told us it didn't delay their travels at all. This is a few seconds, not very long. The Homeland Security Department says the system's already working, nabbing criminals and catching those with expired visas as they try to fly in or out. Now they hope it will do the same thing for potential terrorists. 115 airports across the country are using this system right now. In the next year, the Department of Homeland Security hopes to implement it at the borders between Mexico and the U.S. and Canada and the United States. We're live at LAX tonight. I'm Joel Connable, CBS 2 News. Joel, thank you. A new audio tape has surfaced that experts believe is a message from Osama bin Laden. In the 47-minute tape, bin Laden refers to recent events, including the capture of Saddam Hussein. Some fear the release of the tape signals that another terrorist attack is imminent. This is the eighth audio tape from bin Laden since he disappeared three years ago. It's being called a bold concession from North Korea. The communist government says it will stop producing nuclear weapons, but only under two conditions. North Korea wants U.S. aid, and it also wants to be taken off the U.S. list of nations that sponsor terrorism. But the Bush administration says it needs proof that North Korea will stop testing and producing nuclear arms. It costs former Governor Gray Davis his job, and now California's $14 billion budget deficit will get the attention of his replacement, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Tomorrow, he makes his first State of the State address. And CBS 2's political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now with a preview of that. Dave? Laura, defining the State of the State is easy. It's bad. But what to do about it is a much tougher problem. Tomorrow in that State of the State address, Governor Schwarzenegger will preview his plan for wiping out a crushing budget deficit without raising taxes. Like a lingering holiday hangover, the party may be over for Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and the state legislature as they return to work this week, only to find that even Santa Claus and a new year couldn't make the disastrous budget deficit and a long list of other depressing problems go away. Tomorrow, state lawmakers get their first glimpse at Schwarzenegger's plan to fix the mess. Today, Schwarzenegger stayed out of public view holding a private dress rehearsal for tomorrow's showtime. Thank you. Well, the governor has, is here in Sacramento today. He's been working hard on the speech, practicing the speech, and making sure that he delivers his vision for what he wants um, to be seen in California. And as he himself recently pointed out, his agenda may touch off a fierce battle with free spending legislators. If you thought that the campaign was tough and that we were in the trenches and we were fighting it out, there is something much more to come, because those guys are not going to roll over. With public schools soaking up about 40% of California's general operating budget, there aren't that many other places to cut. Schwarzenegger has indicated that every area of government spending is fair game. Even Prop 98 mandated increases in education spending could be temporarily suspended. On Friday, Schwarzenegger will fill in the blanks, delivering his budget plan for the new fiscal year. Only then will we learn exactly which programs he wants to cut and by how much. Dave Bryan, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Dave. And stay with CBS 2 News for continuing coverage. We will have a team of reporters staffing our Sacramento Bureau. And tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock, we'll bring you Governor Schwarzenegger's first State of the State address live in its entirety. Paul? In the race for the White House, Howard Dean appears to be winning the endorsement battle among Democratic candidates. Tomorrow, Dean will reportedly be endorsed by former New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley. Last month, Dean got the nod from former Vice President Al Gore. Just two weeks from tonight, Democrats in Iowa kick off the 2004 presidential election at caucuses that are the first formal step 
in choosing the Democratic nominee. And Paul, in other news tonight, jury selection resumes in the morning in the retrial of former Inglewood police officer Jeremy Morris. Last summer, the jury that acquitted his partner could not decide on a verdict for Morris, who was accused of assaulting a teenager during an arrest that was caught on videotape. The case of a white officer charged with assaulting a black teenager made national headlines. 175 prospective jurors will fill out questionnaires tomorrow. Attorneys hope to start interviewing them next week. We'll get an update from the Catholic Church tomorrow on its sex abuse crisis. The U.S. Conference of Bishops will release the number of lawsuits filed around the nation. So far, 800 people in California filed molestation lawsuits. 500 of those cases were filed in the Los Angeles area. Another 175 are spread among the dioceses of Orange County, San Bernardino, and San Diego, all of which could lead to one of the biggest clergy abuse settlements in U.S. history. Still to come here at 11 o'clock, a mad cow scare sparks another recall. Tonight, what's being pulled off of shelves and why? Also, stunning pictures from the Red Planet were live with the crew that made it all possible. And the ruling that could keep Kobe Bryant off the court, what the judge said and what it means for the Lakers. Plus, trying to put the rumors to rest, the British government opens an official investigation into the deaths of Princess Di. And Britney's weird wedding and what she's saying about her soon-to-be ex-husband. Laura, when I come back, there's a lot to talk about in the weather department. One, we have a red flag warning in place. Two, some winds and a warm-up. I'll see you in Uno Momento. Tomorrow on CBS 2 News at 5 a.m. Fitness advice on when to work out and when not to if you're feeling sick. Plus, New Year DVD releases including Denzel Washington and new music. It's all tomorrow right here between 5 and 7 a.m. She wore an from YoPlay Light. It's clinically shown to help you burn more fat and lose more weight than just cutting calories alone. She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny. YoPlay Light. Burn more fat, lose more weight. Circuit City's Red Dot sale ends soon. Hurry in today and look for the Red Dot for extra savings in every department. Save up to $350 on desktop packages and notebook computers. Save up to $100 on digital cameras and camcorders. And save up to $500 on plasma and big screen TVs. Like this Magnavox 36-inch stereo TV. Just $399.99. Save $200. Circuit City, we're with you. Excuse me, how do you feel about your stockbroker? The truth? I do all the research, he makes all the money. Please, with all the ideas I come up with, he should be paying me. Oh, we feel great. We switched to TD Waterhouse and we never look back. Why pay all that money to Merrill or Schwab? TD Waterhouse has free independent research that makes it easy to come up with your own ideas and validate them yourself. I've never seen research like this online. So switch to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers like Merrill and Schwab. The Last Samurai is nominated for three Golden Globes, including Best Actor and Winner Best Director National Board of Review. The way of the Samurai is not necessary. What could be more necessary? The Last Samurai, rated R, now playing. Mervyn's One Day Only Sale, Wednesday Only, everything's on sale. Save 30 to 70% on special store-wide. Time ticking away. Mervyn's Big Brands, Small Prices. CBS 2 News is sponsored in part by Mervyn's. Now, CBS 2 News at 11. Another mad cow recall tonight. This one involves soup bones. The bones were sold to restaurants in the San Jose area. They were from cows that slaughtered the same day as the one that turned out to have mad cow disease. Earlier today, the U.S. Department of Agriculture said it will destroy 450 calves from a quarantine herd in Washington State that includes an offspring of the diseased cow. The return of SARS has China taking action. The government there has ordered the slaughter of thousands of these cats, civet cats, which are linked to a new human case of the disease. But the World Health Organization says it has no hard evidence the animals are the source of the disease and that destroying them could eliminate important medical evidence. Animal experts also warn the slaughter could lead to more contamination if not done properly. They're seeing red tonight in Pasadena, the red planet that is. Scientists at the Jet Propulsion Lab are anxiously waiting for color pictures for the Mars rover. CBS 2's Josh Rubenstein is live in Pasadena with the very latest on the mission there. Josh? Laura, you might call it a fantastic voyage. You can't help 
but get caught up in the hype out here at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. The men and women who work here are giddy. It's the good stuff uh, good science fiction movies are made of, and I've got the 3D glasses to prove it. Coming up in just a little over an hour, hopefully we'll see Mars like we've never seen it before. We are bouncing on the surface of Mars. For thousands of years, humans have looked to the heavens with wonder. But today, men and women are looking to the heavens through 3D glasses. This is where you all get to wear these lovely looking glasses. Uh, generally, you want to use uh, the red one on your left eye and uh, the blue one on your right eye. They aren't watching a 50s B movie. They're actually looking at our next frontier, the surface of Mars, the images courtesy of the spirit. We have never had the kind of mobility that, and, and vision that we do with this particular spacecraft. After a seven-month journey, Spirit touched down on the Martian surface three days ago and has been beaming back pictures of the red planet ever since. Scientists are calling it a window to Mars's past. Mars is close. It's got a lot of characteristics similar to the Earth. It's the next place. Perched on its pedestal right now, the rover continues to scan the environment of its new home, Gusov's crater. So here's what's next for the Mars rover. It's going to roll off its platform and head for its first target a place called Sleepy Hollow. It's a 30 feet deep crater on Mars' surface, all in support of the theory that Mars was once wetter, warmer, and could possibly have sustained life. What is sexy about being on another planet with an off-road vehicle that can go anywhere you want? Um, <laughs> that, that's it in and of itself. We're getting the opportunity to really do exploring, to go over the rise and see what's on the other side. And the only thing missing, little green men. Now take these off they're freaking me out uh we can tell you that uh, sometime after midnight we're going to get our first color images i am told they're going to be the most dynamic detailed images we've ever seen from the red planet there is also another rover that is hurling towards mars as we speak it's expected to land sometime in the next three weeks and it'll explore the other side of the planet for now we're live at the jet propulsion lab josh rubenstein cbs 2 news back to you josh it is so exciting They've been trying to do this for years, and this is a great, successful mission. Wait till and the Martians find this. <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome all majors to KCBS. We did it at 5 o'clock. We yeah. welcomed you, mm -hmm. and yes, we're you. so happy to have you here from Minneapolis, and welcome to our team. I appreciate it very much, and I just want to add a quick note. Byron, you as well, but you in particular, because I spent most of the day with you. You have been, I know you're not feeling well today, and I'm thinking to myself, if you're gracious and this kind on a day when you're feeling bad, yeah. then on a day when you're feeling great, I'm in heaven. Well, yeah. you I make mean, it easy. That's a real compliment to you. Thank you very well, I'm much. I'm not feeling well Welcome. either. What, what, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to have you here, Paul. Isn't it great? You know, I did some checking on him, and all of my friends said he was a great guy and a great person on air, and it's true, so mm -hmm. nice to have you. You the man. <laughs> We're going to go outside right now and show you what it looks like. L.A., the Almanac page, 66. The average for this date, 68. Let's move on to view Doppler. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to tell you about the red flag warning. But first, nothing going on. It is quiet and no rain in the forecast. So let me show you the temperatures, then we'll get to the winds, and we'll talk about the red flag warning. Currently in Van Nuys, low 50s. Look at Lancaster. You have to bundle up. That is more like Chicago or Minnesota or somewhere in the Midwest, very chilly. How about 52 in downtown LA, 48? Not bad in Riverside, high 40s in Santa Ana. Winds out of the Northeast at 15 miles per hour in Van Nuys. Early in the morning, the winds are gonna pick up. There's a red flag warning in place, low humidity tomorrow and high winds, but the winds will die down early in the afternoon. Satellite loop, LA, San Diego for the most part, we're in the clear. High pressure, clear skies, cool temperatures in the morning. 26 degrees. Hi, can you see me? Hello. Oh, hey, hey, there I am. Hi, it's nice to see you. Okay, 41 is the temperature in Murrieta at 8 a.m. High pressure just to the east of us. Red flag warning. It goes bye-bye by about 10 a.m. A little windy and then nice temperature. 67, Mission Viejo. How about 57? Lancaster, 69 in Palm Springs. 70, downtown L.A. Yes, it's going to be a beautiful Tuesday, Wednesday, 67. By Thursday, we're climbing back up to 68, and over the weekend, 70 degrees for Paul to hang out. Me hang out? Laura hang out? We'll all hang out. Perfect. Low 70s. Like Not bad for L.A. I California agree. weather. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. For the first time since her death, the British government has opened an official inquest of the death of Princess Diana. Princess Di and her boyfriend, Dodi Fayette, were killed in a car crash in Paris in 1997. A French court ruled that it was an accident. The Fayette's billionaire father believes the princess and his son were murdered by the British Secret Service because Fayette was Muslim. 
Jury selection in the case against Martha Stewart is set to begin tomorrow. A star witness is Doug Fannell, the former assistant to Stewart's stockbroker. He's expected to testify. He told Stewart that her friend Sam Waskell, the former CEO of Imcone Systems, was trying to unload stock in the company. Stewart claims she had a preset agreement to sell the stock when it dropped below $60 a share. A new legal battle for the couple accused of kidnapping Elizabeth Smart. Lawyers for Brian Mitchell and his wife Wanda Barzee want the competency hearings off limits to the media. The attorneys argue the pair would never get a fair trial if the hearings were made public. Mitchell and Barzee are charged with kidnapping and sexual assault in the abduction of that Utah teen. And potentially incriminating medical files on Rush Limbaugh will be sealed for at least two weeks. That's the latest ruling from a Florida judge tonight. The radio host wants to keep his medical records away from prosecutors who say Limbaugh may have illegally purchased more than 2,000 painkillers. Limbaugh has admitted to having a drug problem, but says releasing his doctor's files to investigators would violate his privacy. Britney Spears fans are still asking just what was she thinking? She got married and unmarried all in just a weekend. CBS 2 reporter Lisa Siegel is here with more on the quickie marriage and the groom. Paul, even by Hollywood standards, Britney's surprise wedding was very short. She said, I do, before dawn Saturday morning, and hours later her lawyer was saying, no, she doesn't. I'm seriously speechless right now. This and so were fans after word got out of Britney Spears' quickie marriage at this wedding chapel in Las Vegas and the subsequent annulment. This is new video of Spears at the Palms, a Las Vegas hotel. It was taken just hours before she exchanged wedding vows. Boy, did she. Forget that notorious MTV kiss with Madonna. Fans worldwide are talking about the man being dubbed Mr. Britney Spears and what it was that made her marry him. His name is Jason Allen Alexander, and his family says the groom is back home in Louisiana, seeking an escape from, well, notoriety. He's described as a childhood friend of Britney's. They are just being crazy. I don't think they really meant anything by it. So whether or not she was planning on actually becoming his wife this weekend, I don't, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Caroline Schaefer of Us Weekly says the childhood friends were partying in Las Vegas Saturday and took a joke too far. Hence the filing of these annulment papers in Vegas this afternoon. Spears says she lacked the understanding of her actions when she got hitched at the spur of the moment. And okay, the bride wore blue jeans and a baseball cap, the groom, casual clothing, and one thing the couple does not have to worry about, returning wedding gifts. I'm Lisa Siegel, CBS 2 News. See, there is a silver lining. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Will legal problems foul up the Lakers season? Up next right here, what a judge's ruling means for Kobe Bryant. Also, did you spend too much? How holiday debt can lead to serious financial problems and what you can do about it. And what researchers have uncovered about coffee and disease prevention. Come back to me as my request finds its way into towns and houses and villages. It was that struggle taken down to a very human level. It's meditation on the way we react to violence, how we move toward peace. It's very much about the fact that life refuses to give up. And now it's been nominated for eight Golden Globe Awards, including Best Picture of the Year. Cold Mountain, rated R, now playing. Paul's biggest ever January clearance is on now. Fantastic savings with no payments and no interest for 18 months. Pay nothing till July 2005 at Paul's TV. I am with this. savings account from ING Direct. America's highest yield with no minimums or fees. Call 1-800-ING Direct. Moulin Rouge, Romeo and Juliet and Strictly Ballroom. And now, some of the world's finest young singers in the greatest love story ever sung. Baz Luhrmann's production of Puccini's stage at the Amundsen Theater. Call now for tickets. Right now, over half our suits and sport coats are on sale. Plus hundreds of pants, sweaters, shoes, shirts, and outerwear. 20 to 50% off. Now that's a sale. I guarantee it. The Men's Warehouse Winter Sale. 
why do Minecraft singles taste so good? The dairy curried mixes up the milk with a little magic. Kids know about taste. They don't know that Kraft American singles have double the calcium. Double the calcium of most other American slices. The lights and decorations are all packed away, but now one dreaded holiday tradition is just beginning. The onslaught of January credit card bills. The average consumer spent $1,000 during the holidays. Most Americans now carry an average of $10,000 in credit card debt. Financial experts say if you set a budget and keep a written record of where your money goes, you'll be less inclined to overspend. Paul? A new study says drinking coffee may reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Men who drank six cups of coffee a day lowered their risk by half. Women lowered theirs by nearly a third. The Harvard researcher who conducted the study says they don't know what in the coffee made the difference, but they didn't get the same results with decaffeinated coffee or even with tea. Will Kobe Bryant's legal problems affect the Lakers' season? The answer coming up, but first, Jim Hill is here with a preview of sports. Paul and Laura coming up next in sports. The Lakers talk about their two injured superstars. The Ducks are in action in hockey. And in college football, the national championship is back where it belongs. USC celebrates their championship, and we'll hear from some of the Trojans next in sports. SBC. Going beyond the call. Girl with a Pearl Earring, winner of two Golden Globe nominations, including Best Actress. It's a film of great beauty. Oscar voters should recognize Scarlett Johansson. Girl with a Pearl Earring. Ready PG-13. Now playing in select theaters. Jim, USC getting its props today. They certainly did. And, of course, we're talking about Paul coming here, being here, and welcome. You picked the perfect time to come to Los Angeles as this party mm -hmm. continues mm -hmm. for the USC Trojans. That is for sure. It was, without a doubt, the biggest day in sports on the campus of USC in some 25 years as the men of Troy were presented their AP National Championship trophy today. is getting crowded because this is USC's ninth football title. Of course, they have to share the national championship with LSU, who won the BCS championship game, but no one out at Heritage Hall is complaining at all. Can you? Jim, not what's up with me, what's up with you? That's the question. Well, we're so proud and excited about all this. It's so much fun to, to bring this kind of recognition back to a great university, and it's great to have the, the players around so they can celebrate with it, too. It's, it's a great time for Trojans. Can you put it into words, your personal feelings now? We're national champions. That's the only thing I can think about. You're very emotional at this time, aren't you? We're national champions. It's wonderful. You're on top of the college football world again. Yep, yep. It's just a, it's an amazing thing when, you know, just to be a part of this trophy again and just to remember how much work you put in and where this program's come from. You know, it's had some tough years these past few years and just see how Coach Carroll's brought it back. The AP is a very important poll and the trophy and, um, Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, I'm just, I'm just happy and uh, that the so um, you know, what an honor for us. And so while things are looking up for the Trojans in Laker, Laker land, it's not that good because the Lakers have lost four of their last five games, and it doesn't get any easier. They're in Minnesota taking on the Timberwolves tomorrow night without their two big men. Now, Shaq did make the trip to Minneapolis, but is still out because of a strained right calf muscle. And today at practice, head coach Phil Jackson says he does not expect Shaq to play in either of the two games. Uh, his progress has been so slow, and, you know, there's, uh, he's still limping. So I haven't seen any progress that's dramatic enough to you know, bring us any hope. But he's not on the IR, so he can always play if he's ready. Meanwhile, Carl Malone is out as well, put on the injured list yesterday. He worked out his sprained right knee today at practice in El Segundo, and he talked about his rehab work. But I try to push it a little bit more every day. Uh, uh, I do what I'm supposed to do to get ready to play. It's been a trying year, you know, for me, but I think it just makes me stronger later, and I accept things for what they are. In other NBA news, Clipper Ford Eldon Brand has been named the Western Conference Player of the Week. He averaged 23 points and nearly 12 rebounds in four games last week. He scored a season-high 30 points against the Lakers just last night. And there's some sad news in Major League Baseball to report tonight. Former Major League reliever uh, Tug McGraw has passed because of brain cancer. He was only 59 years old. 
But the games indeed do go on in hockey. The Ducks hosting the Dallas Stars tonight down at the Pond in Anaheim. And they found themselves playing from behind. Sergei Fedorov scores on the power play midway through the third period to even the score. And the game ended in a 2-2 tie. And that's a look at sports for the 11 o'clock hour, Paul. Day number one is in the books for you. Day number one of many, 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 many more to go. It's not in the books quite yet. I have a little more to do. All right. Let's just hope I get through it. Oh, you will. Absolutely, yes. Well, it looks like Lakers star Kobe Bryant will not go on trial for sexual assault until the basketball season is over. The judge today scheduled a series of pre-trial hearings that should last until April, so it's unlikely a trial would begin before the NBA schedule ends in late June. Bryant's next court hearing is later this month. It's expected to include statements Bryant made to investigators, statements the defense wants to loan out. Meet California's newest millionaires. Up next, find out what they plan to do with all of that cash. CBS 2 News is sponsored in part by Mervyn's. My husband went to bed, and I picked it up on the 11 o'clock news. And then uh, I just went in and had to wake him up. He was very perturbed. I pulled him out of a deep sleep. Miguel Bazan woke up fast when he found out that he and his wife Pamela had just won California's $88 million super lotto jackpot. The Los Alamitos couple will end up with 35 million bucks after taxes. Now, the first thing the new multimillionaires did was hire a banker, of course, and plan a vacation. The Bazan said that they will probably buy a mansion. Yeah. One for Monday, one for Tuesday, <laughs> one for Wednesday. All the days of the week. Exactly. Perfect. That's going to do it for us. We know you have many choices for news, and we thank you for choosing CBS. The Late Show is coming up next. Jennifer Anderson is Dave's guest. And don't forget to watch CBS 2 News tomorrow starting at 5 a.m. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Two down. You're in there. <laughs> good night, everybody. Catch all your favorite stars at the People's Choice Awards. Live CBS Sunday.